Let us now take the fourth model from the topic of allegations or mixtures where we should look at some miscellaneous questions which can also be answered using the allegation rule. Let us look at example number one. The question here is Deepak has some goats and some hens. The total number of heads is 90 and the total number of feet is 248. What is the number of goats? Now this is a very simple question which can be solved using two linear equation in terms of number of goats and number of hens. Let us assume that the number of goats is G and the number of hens is H. Now from the question the total number of heads is 90. Total number of heads is nothing but total number of animals. So we can say G plus H is equal to 90. And we also know that the total number of feet is 248. Now each goat has got 4 feet. So the number of feet of the goats there will be 4G plus each hen has got 2 feet. So 2H will be equal to 248. So we have got one equation which is the total number of heads of goats and hens and the second one is about the total number of feet 4G plus 2H equals to 248. Now these two linear equations in two unknowns can be solved to find out the number of goats. So that's the simple straightforward method of solving two equations to find out the required answer. Interestingly, this question can also be answered using the allegation rule because it is all about mixture of two different types of animals. Let us assume type 1 is goats and type 2 is hens. We know that the total number of animals is 90 and the total number of feet of both the types of animals together is 248. Now this one value can be taken as the mean value or the mixture value that is 248 is the number of feet of all the animals together. Now allegation rule is as follows T1, T2 and M. When we take the cross differences we should get the ratio of the two quantities. Here the ratio of the two quantities is nothing but the ratio of the number of animals. Quantity of goats which is nothing but number of goats is to quantity of hens, number of hens. Now because T1 is with respect to goats we will get G here and T2 is with respect to hens we will get H here. So finally when we substitute the proper values and apply allegation rule that is the cross differences we will get the ratio of G is to H and that ratio can be used along with the total number of heads 90 to find out the number of goats. Now the question that arises is what should come in place of T1, T2 and M. We have already learned that M will be nothing but 248, the number of feet of the mixture of animals together. So let's take M as 248. What will be coming in place of T1 and T2? Let us assume all the 90 animals are goats. T1 is with respect to goats. Let us assume all the 90 animals are goats. Now if all the 90 are goats, what should be the total number of feet? 90 into 4 because each goat has got 4 feet. So we can say T1 will be equal to 90 into 4 which is 360. What about T2? T2 is with respect to hens. If all the 90 are hens, what will be the total number of feet? Each hen has got 2 feet. So 90 into 2, 180. This will be equal to 180. Now if you really look at it, this is the number of feet for only goats, number of feet for only hens and number of feet of the final mixture of goats and hens. When we take the cross difference of these values, we will get the ratio G is to H. So let's take the cross difference. Now 180 difference 248 is 68 is to 360 difference 248 will be 112. So we can say G is to H equals to 68 is to 112 but this can be simplified further as I think 4 into 17 is 68 and 4 into 28 is 112. So the final ratio can be taken as 17 is to 28. So clearly we know that goats is to hens the ratio is 17 is to 28. Now we can use this ratio 17 is to 28 with respect to 90 to find out the number of goats. The final question here is what is the number of goats? So the number of goats G will be equal to 17 parts out of total 17 plus 28 45. So 17 by 45 into the total number of animals is 90. So 17 by 45 into 90. 45 goes 2 times 2 into 17 is 34. So we can say the number of goats will be equal to 34 and the remaining will be hens. 90 minus 34, 56 will be the number of hens. So this is how a simple question which can actually be answered using two equations can also be solved using the allegation rule.
Even if you try to solve these two equations, you will get the same answer. G equals to 34. How do you solve these two equations? Multiply both the equations by 2. Because we have to eliminate the number of hens. So 2 into G plus 2 into H will be equal to 180. So 2H and 2H gets cancelled. 4G minus 2G will be 2G. 2G is equal to 248 minus 180. 68. So G is equal to 34. So although this method is easier to get the required answer, but the idea here is to understand that such questions can also be answered using the allegation rule. So simply apply the allegation rule or follow the two equations to get the required answer. Let us now take the second example from model 4 of allegations or mixtures. The question here is, an amount of rupees 780 is distributed among 60 students of a class such that each boy gets rupees 15 and each girl gets rupees 10. What is the number of boys? Now this question again is similar to what we have seen in example 1. Right? There we had two different types of animals, goats and hens. And here we have some number of boys and number of girls. The total number of students is 60. So we can say boys plus girls is equal to 60. Right? Let us assume the number of boys is B and the number of girls is G. So total has to be 60. The other information that we have here is the total amount was 780 which was distributed among these 60 students such that each boy gets rupees 15 and each girl gets rupees 10. So if each boy gets rupees 15 the total amount, amount with the boys will be 15 B 15 into B plus the total amount with the girls 10 into G as each girl gets 10 rupees and the sum of these two values should be equal to 780 because that was the total amount distributed among boys and girls. Now again we see that we have got two equations in two variables b and g. We can solve these two equations to find out the number of boys or the number of girls as the case may be. But let us now solve this question using the allegation rule. Now you know that type 1 here is one category of students and type 2 is the other category of students. Let us assume type 1 is boys and type 2 is girls. So how do you apply allegation rule? See 60 here is the total number of students boys plus girls. So that doesn't really help in the allegation rule. But what can help us in allegation rule is the amount of 780. We know that the mixture of these 60 students the mixture of boys and girls has got total 780 rupees out of which there are some boys and some girls each boy gets 15 and each girl gets 10. Now if we assume that all the 60 students are boys if all the 60 students are boys what should be the total amount 60 into 15 because each boy gets 15 rupees 60 into 15 is 900 so this will be 900. If all the 60 students are girls each girl gets 10 rupees and if all the 60 are girls, what should be the total amount? 60 into 10 which is 600. But we know that the actual mixture of these boys and girls have got a total amount of 780. So the mean value or the mixture value can be taken as 780. Now take the cross difference to get the ratio of the boys is to girls. Remember 900 is with respect to boys and 600 is with respect to girls. So the ratio will be B is to G. If we take 600 here and 900 here, we get G is to B. Right? The final answer is going to be same based on what value you take first. Type 1 is boys and type 2 is girls. Or type 1 is girls and type 2 is boys. That doesn't really uh, affect our answer. Now, 900 difference 780 is equal to 120. And 600 difference 780 is equal to 180. So, boys is to girls is equal to 180 is to 120 which can be simplified as 3 is to 2. So, we know that the ratio of boys to girls is 3 is to 2. Now, we need to find out the number of boys. See, clearly there are 60 students in the class. So, the total number of students is 60. So, the number of boys can be taken as 3 parts out of total 5. 3 parts plus 2 parts 5. 3 by 5 into total number of students is 60. So this will give us 12 into 3, 36. So we can say there are 36 boys in the class and the remaining 24 are girls. Even when we use the two equations and solve them, we find that the number of boys will be equal to 36. So either we can go ahead with the equations or the allegation rule to obtain the answer for such questions. Let us now take the third example from model 4 of this topic where we shall try to solve a question on simple interest using the allegation rule. Let's look at the question first. The question says a sum of rupees 12,000 is divided into two parts. 
one part is lent at simple interest of 6% per annum and the other at 8% per annum. What is the sum lent at 8% per annum if the total interest at the end of one year is Rs. 860? So here we know that there is a total sum of Rs. 12,000 which has been split into two parts, divided into two parts. One part is lent at 6% per annum and the other part is lent at 8% per annum. So the rates of interest in two different schemes are 6% and 8% respectively. right? So scheme A and scheme B let's say. Scheme A offers 6% per annum, scheme B offers 8% per annum. Now what is the sum lent at 8% per annum? That means how much was invested in scheme B if the total interest at the end of one year is Rs. 860. So from both the schemes together the amount that we have got is 860. The regular way of answering this question would be to write two equations in terms of the two principal amounts. Let us assume that the two parts are P1 and P2. P1 is the principal for scheme 1 or scheme A and P2 is the principal for scheme B. So we know that P1 plus P2 will be equal to 12,000 because the total principal is 12,000 and interest 6% of P1 plus 8% of P2 will be equal to 860 because this is the interest for one year. So in one year we get 6% on P1 and we get 8% on P2. So sum of these two values 6% of P1 plus 8% of P2 is equal to 860. So this question has been already discussed in the topic of simple and compound interest and you know how to answer this using the two equations. But let us now see how can we answer this question using the allegation rule instead of the regular equations. Here as I've mentioned the two parts are P1 and P2. So P1 plus P2 is 12,000. Now let us assume that the total 12,000 sum itself is lent at 6% per annum. There are no parts. Complete sum of 12,000 is invested at 6% per annum. So what will be the interest that we get in one year? 6 percentage of 12,000 which will be equal to 120 into 6, 720. Right? That is type 1 value for us. Then what is type 2? The whole sum of 12,000 is invested at 8% per annum. So we can say type 2 will be 8 percentage of 12,000. We are not dividing into separate parts. We are assuming that the whole sum is invested at 6% and 8%. So 8% of 12,000 will be 960. So this is equal to 960. Now we also know that when the parts are individually invested at 6% and 8% respectively, the interest obtained is 860. So this 860 is the value for the mixture of P1 and P2. So we can say the mixture M is nothing but 860. Now by applying allegation rule to these three values, we will be able to find out the ratio of P1 and P2. So 720, 960 and 860. So 960 difference 860 is 100 and 720 difference 860 is 140. So this can be simplified as 5 is to 7, 25 and 27. So 5 is to 7. So we can say P1 is to P2. P1 is to P2 should be equal to 5 is to 7. Now what is P1? P1 is the value which has been lent at 6 percentage per annum, right? You have to take this properly. 6 percent is to 8 percent or otherwise 8 percent is to 6 percent. So because 720 is 6 percentage of 12,000, so we know that this is for 6 percent. So 6 percent and 8 percent. So that ratio is 5 is to 7, right? Now the question here says what is the sum lent at 8 percentage per annum. So how much has been lent at 8 percent per annum? 7 parts. 7 parts out of total 12 parts. So we can say, see this is actually principal at 6 percentage per annum and principal at 8 percentage per annum. So the amount or the principal amount which has been invested at 8 percent per annum is 7 parts out of total 7 plus 5, 12 parts into the total amount 12,000 because that 12,000 actually has been divided into the ratio of 5 is to 7. So this comes out to be 7000. So we can say that the amount which has been invested at 8 percentage per annum is 7000 and the rest of the amount 12000 minus 7000 that is equal to 5000 has been invested at 6 percentage per annum. So we have seen the regular way of solving this question in the topic of simple and compound interest where we use two equations and solve them to get the required answer. But here we can solve the same question using the allocation rule. So you can apply any of these two methods based on whatever is comfortable for you. So that's all from this topic of allegations and mixtures. Practice well on these questions. See you in the next session. Thank you.